Good evening, God Saints, and welcome to Scotts Chapel Online Ministries. I am your host, Pastor Fred Jenkins, and we want to get into tonight's lesson of what we believe in, dealing with looking at the Apostles' Creed and understanding our belief. Because what we believe determines what we do. What we believe determines how we behave. So our beliefs are essential. What we believe affects how we live from day to day and where we'll go in the future and how it will be in the future. So it's important to get an understanding. Uh, the Bible talks about to feed on pure spiritual milk, which is the word of God. So I'm going to try and give you some of what the word says, and we'll just have a just general overall discussion so we be mindful and put on the mind of Christ of what it is that we believe. Because, again, it dictates what we do. Now, a summary of our belief system can be found in the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is not in the Bible. It was not written by the apostles, but every element of the creed is found in the Bible. We do not know who wrote it, but we still say the creed because it is an excellent summary of what it is that we believe. We'll look at one uh, particular passage of scripture, which is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we'll probably read verses 1 through 11, and then we'll get into tonight's lesson. So turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, beginning at verse 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach. And this is what you believe. So Paul was concerned of what it is, where did they get their information from, what was the knowledge of their understanding and what it is that they believed in because to change the culture, to change behavior, to change the outcome of our situation, it is determined upon our belief system. So he was given a summary of the gospel message. What is the gospel message? Well, again, the early writers of the, uh, in our Christian faith have given us a good summary. And that summary is the Apostles' Creed. And it says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life 
everlasting. Amen. The statement of our beliefs are important. Again, what we believe determines how we behave. We are striving to translate our learning into living and show by our daily lives that we trust in God and his word. First Colossians 3 says, in verse 1, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Be mindful of things above, not on things on earth, for you died, and your life has been hidden with Christ in God. Paul tells believers what to think about also in the Philippians. He says, think things that are true, noble, right, pure lovely, admirable, and excellent, and praiseworthy. Besides defining what thoughts should fill our minds, this, this text teaches us that we can control what we think about. When we develop and have the mind of Christ, we have the ability to control our mind and replace it with godly thoughts. In our spiritual warfare, taking control of our thoughts is essential because the devil will come at you with all kinds of uh, nonsense, untruths, lies, and deceptions to get you from your purpose in God. To get to your purpose, you have to have the knowledge. You have to have the understanding and the vision that that knowledge brings. So it is essential. And that's why Proverbs 4 and 23 says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. So focusing on and trusting in God's grace has to do with what we believe. Peter writes, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given when Jesus Christ is revealed. That's first. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. See, we act a certain way because we think a certain way. That's why Paul wrote to the Roman church in chapter 12, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind in order to prove by you what is good and pleasing and perfect will of God. Our goal in sanctification and our growth in Christ is to grow and think like God thinks, being led by his spirit and conformed to the image of his son. So the more we learn and reprogram our mind to think God's thoughts, the more into the likeness of Christ we become and effective in living in the present. What is it? that you believe in? Do you affirm the scripture's record of the person and work of Jesus Christ? For the gospel is simply about Jesus. The Bible is about Jesus. He is the gospel message. That is the summary of our belief. Do you believe that God saves sinners solely on the merits of Jesus Christ? obedient life, and his substitutionary death on the cross. When we read in the letter to the Ephesians in chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God and not the results of works so that no one may boast. This incredible gift of grace flows from God's great love for us and is offered through Jesus Christ. And when I believe and understand, this starts to feed my spirit to produce the works, to produce the result of my belief. So John wrote, the Apostle John, 
in chapter 3, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The love we receive is not dependent on human actions or human responses. It is a gift. A gift is always available, but it can be refused. Paul wrote, but God proved his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. All of this is just a summary of the Apostles' Creed. That when we come to an understanding, see, our salvation is not static. It is not a one-time event that we were saved back whenever. And then nothing changes and nothing, everything goes the same or everything is going to be all right. No. We grow through the knowledge of him that called us. And through that knowledge, it produces a belief or trust in him. And when that belief and trust grows, it produces the fruits of righteousness. What we believe determines how we behave. So the Apostles' Creed, in its simplicity, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. The summary of our belief, the substance of our belief, is the word of God. We must believe, and the statement is, all of this is from the word of God. And if I don't believe the word of God, if I don't believe that it is inerrant, God breathed in complete and final authority for faith and for life, then it is for nothing. It starts with the belief that God's word is true. Secondly, it testifies to the deity and idea of God, that God is real, that there is one God, creator of all, who reveals himself in three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet is one being in essence and in glory, that God is eternal. Before there was a what, when, or where, before there were even time, God was and has always been. And he is sovereign, he is eternal, he is infinite, he is omniscient, he is omnipresent, he is omnipotent, all-powerful, and <laughs> unchanging, and holy. He is righteous, and he is the fulfillment of love, and he is truth. You want to know what truth is? Truth is a person, God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Hmm. We believe in the deity of Jesus Christ that he is God incarnate or God manifested in flesh, that this supreme God took on human form, the express image of the Father, who without ceasing to be God became man in order that he might demonstrate who God was, the visible representation of God the Father and provide a means for our salvation. We believe that Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit, that he was born of the Virgin Mary, that he is truly and fully God and truly and fully man that he lived a perfect, sinless life, that all of his teachings are true because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except by me. We believe that Jesus died on the cross for all humanity as a substitutionary sacrifice. And we believe and hold that his death is sufficient to provide salvation for all who receive him as Savior. For if the Lord is not your Savior, if he is not Lord, then you are in a world of trouble. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. His death is sufficient to provide all salvation to who receives him. That our justification is grounded in the shedding of his blood. He took the sacrifice. He took the punishment for our sins. We believe that Jesus ascended also into heaven in his glorified body, and is now seated at the right hand of authority as our high priest, as our advocate, as our savior. And we believe that he is coming again. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, or the third person of the Godhead that he is God and that he is sent by Jesus Christ to live and dwell and regenerate sinners, to call us to salvation, that he is the seal by whom the Father guarantees our salvation until the day of redemption. See, if you are a believer, you have the Holy Spirit of God living in you. Where is God? He's right there. He's with you. He says, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. We believe that the Holy Spirit is ultimately sovereign in the distribution of God's gift. You don't produce the fruit. The Holy Spirit does. He produces it in you and through you. We also believe that salvation is a gift of God's grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. That Christ's death fully accomplished justification through faith and redemption from sin. And justification is just if I've never sinned. That's what we believe. And that he bore my sins and your sins on the cross. And on the third day, as he said, I will rise. And he rose again, demonstrating his victory over sin on the cross and death when he rose. We believe that salvation is received by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. There is no salvation in anyone else or anything else. It is through Jesus that we are saved. The statements also reveal that we believe that humanity came into ex existence. You are here because you were created by God and made in his likeness. We believe that all humanity, because of Adam's fall, inherited a sin nature. And we believe that all human beings choose to sin. God made you a free moral agent. You can choose to do whatever you want to. You can choose to love him. He's not going to force you to love him. Christianity is not some cult. It's not some things that we force somebody to do it. You can do whatever you want to do. But here's the truth. And the truth shall set you free. The truth of what we believe brings freedom. So if you're bound, if, if you're struggling right now, what is it 
that you believe in. Hmm. Isn't this wonderful? So we believe also that the church is the body of Christ here on earth. It is a spiritual organism made up of all believers. We believe in the ordinance of baptism, water baptism, as a testimony to identifying with Christ in his death and shed blood through the Lord's Supper. Uh, through the church, believers are taught to obey the Lord and to testify concerning their faith. Let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We believe in the Great Commission. Go out into all the world and preach the gospel. The truths of God's word. This is the truth. And that truth will determine where we go. We believe the souls of believer are at death, absent from the body, and present with the Lord. Where we await our resurrection, our great resurrection, when the spirit, soul, and body are reunited and glorified forever with the Lord. His son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he arose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick. He's coming back. The first advent is when he came. The second, he's coming again to judge the quick and the dead. You will face judgment. Believers for rewards. Unbelievers for the lake of fire. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the body of believers again, the communion of saints, the fellowship one with another. You are to love your neighbor as you love yourself. The forgiveness of sins. We've been justified. Old things have passed. Behold, all things have become new. The resurrection of the body. We don't die, we multiply. And life everlasting. Amen. That's the Apostles' Creed. This is a summary of what we believe. God bless you and God keep you and God smile upon you. And again, happy Sunday.